All right. And those grooves are held to within two thousandths of an inch. The reason that's important is because the interface between that inside of that groove and the outer wall that compresses the O-ring, you have to control that because you're taking a, a circular O-ring and you're going to squish it to an oval. Is that right, Charlie? That's correct. There's another detail to those O-ring grooves, right? Right. These are the dynamic grooves. Those two are the ones that actually are turning. Did you hear what he just said? He said they're dynamic O-rings. Extreme pressures can force the elastomer into the small clearance between the mating surfaces just beyond the groove. This can cause the material to shear and flow into the extrusion gap, causing seal failure. Dynamic applications can hasten extrusion, but high pressure in static applications can have the same effect. Did you hear what he just said? He said they're dynamic O-rings. That means there's a shaft running through it actually rubbing on the O-ring. So you've got the air that you're breathing as an astronaut, right? And it's being held back from the vacuum of space by two little bitty O-rings. That's incredible. So this design that you made 20 years ago is still being operated today flawlessly. How does that make you feel? I hope it's flawless. Soon I'll be showing you my all face. Okay. So we can call it a shutter that protects the windows from micrometeorites. Okay. Okay, shutters are closed, the windows are protected. And also thermally insulates the windows from the radiation environment of space. So can you shut these things from the outside? No. You can open and close it from the inside. Oh, okay, wait. On the inside, you're throwing a lever or something, and, it, and it's and it's open on the outside. On the outside. How do you do that and maintain a pressure seal between them? O-ring type seals. No, you don't. With a rotating shaft. All our hatch seals are O-ring type seals. Yeah, but how? Uh, 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 a whole series of O-rings in here, and a shaft that you rotate. So, I mean, like on the space station, how many of these would you have? Uh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. You just have a leak. And, and, and what you would do you is... You lose air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole cupola off. And then uh, there's probably a plan, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan for replacing the, the mechanism might require a spacewalk. So my question is, how can you operate a lid on the outside of the space station by manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure. Soon I'll be showing you my all face. It's it's called real good engineering. Okay, you heard Don Pettit. All face. Before going into the simulator, I took a look at the uh, pictures from the launch pad, saw all the icicles hanging and said to myself, oh, well, no way they're going to launch today. It's much too cold. At 11.39 Eastern, twice the speed of sound, the Challenger's fuselage breaks apart from the inside out. It wasn't until several weeks later that all of the discussions about the O-ring came out. There was a groove which the O-ring, both the primary and the secondary O-rings, fit in those grooves. Uh, the requirement for it to move quickly is why it was dependent on temperature because lower temperatures, less flexibility, and not so rapid reconfiguration of the O-ring. Each window has a handle that looks like this, and you just turn it, obviously in the closed direction if you want to close the window, and here you can see the window coming closed, or the shutter. And when you get close to the, to the, to the end, to the closed position, you kind of want to be careful because there is no bumper, so you don't want to hit the structure real hard. Uh, it's a direct mechanical connection. Shutters can only be operated manually. And um, it's kind of cool to think that, you know, there is this shaft that uh, goes sort of through the structure. The other side is in outer space. It feels cold, but the regular metal cold, not really, really cold. In terms of the space shuttle, I think uh, the glass transition temperature is an easily characterized parameter, parameter. One can use a technique called differential scanning calorimetry, for example, to know exactly where that temperature is. Um, therefore, you have a pretty good idea of what temperatures you want to keep away from in terms of this material transitioning from this very resilient, flexible state, which is obviously needed for an O-ring, to this very brittle state where the material is not going to respond and change very well. And the main problem is that this rubber idler wheel is hard as a rock. It's lost all of its flexibility. And one of the solutions I saw mentioned is 
goo gone. So I'm going to get a cotton swab and put some goo gone on this and see if that softens it up. Well, I don't know how that goo gone is going to work on the idler wheel, but it did a great job of removing the rubber residue from the motor spindle there. Okay. So this is a fairly common thing we see. This is what you call belt goo. The belt's decomposed and turned into tar. And it's also all over the rim of the platter. Looks like it's been ground into the uh, plinth a little bit. So that will need to be cleaned off. And of course the reason for that will be the rubber drive belt has perished and snapped and just needs replacing. The same thing happens with any machinery of this age. Well, things spinning around, then more than likely it's going to be that the belt has perished. And of course that's the scenario we've got here. You can see the belt hanging out of the machine. I'll just pick this up. After a certain amount of time, these belts just disintegrate. You can see here I can just pull this apart with no effort at all. So that's obviously needs replacing. You sometimes have to clear off any kind of residue that's come off rubber like that. If it's got to a certain age, it just really turns to kind of gunk and gets wrapped around a load of things. So you want to clean all that off first. You can see I've got a bit on the motor here. So I'm just going to use some IPA solvent to make sure I wipe off. You've seen this in my other videos. See where that belt was laying around here? You see the pattern of where it was laying. The stuff turns to tar basically over time and uh, just gums everything up. So In the top here, which has a belt in it, which luckily hasn't perished. This is of course what happens with old rubber belts in things. They get this uh, stickiness, they perish as it's known and they lose their elasticity as well. So the belt is completely melted. These little rubber grips, they started getting sticky and leaving black marks everywhere and this was really going to stop me from using it. And when they first made them they had a rubberized coating on them which over time perishes and it goes horribly sticky, it's a horrible mess. Several uh, things I bought that have this rubberized coating on it and after time it starts to deteriorate and get sticky. You can see this one's like totally melted. Have you ever had a uh, piece of rubber that is sticky and um, you can see that the, the rubber has deteriorated? Uh, plastic pieces like this right here, they put a, a soft, they want it to be like a, a rubber touch feel. And then in the heat, the, that rubbery touch, I don't know if it's a spray on or a, a glue on, adhesive, whatever, it just it gets really gummy and really nasty. And solving the problem of this constantly disintegrating rubber. Uh, to rejuvenate the rubber on. It was an IBM ThinkPad from the early 2000s, and they used a rubber coating on it to make to give it better grip, I think. Uh, what basically the deal with this rubber was is that it was really it just felt really sticky and really nasty, and uh, you know, it was basically it, it, it was deteriorating. So So whether that, your car is new or has some miles on it. The rubber seals around your door, trunk, sunroof, any of these areas uh, can get worn down and then begin to leak over time. So with a little bit of TLC and regular maintenance, you can keep them fresh and new for years. There's probably a plan, I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan for replacing the, the mechanism it might require a spacewalk. Traveling to space continues to be one of the most dangerous things humanity's ever done, and space agencies want to do everything they can to minimize that risk. First, they fixed the problem with the O-rings, adding an additional ring to each link between the sections, as well as heating pads that made sure they stayed above 24 degrees no matter how cold it was outside. Okay, we found what might be the most critical part of the entire drawing package. This is the inner shaft. And you can see right here, there are two grooves. First, they fixed the problem with the O-rings, adding an additional ring to each link between the sections. And you can see right here, there are two grooves. As well as heating pads that made sure they stayed above 24 degrees, no matter how cold it was outside. It feels cold, but the regular metal cold, not really, really cold. January 28th, it was more like two degrees. And some of the engineers working on the shuttle knew that colder weather was a problem for the O-rings, the rubber seals that hold together the four sections of each solid rocket booster. When it got too cold, the rubber wasn't as flexible, which meant that the fuel could leak. So they my question is, how can you operate a lid on the outside of the space station by manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure? 
It's it's called real good engineering. Soon I'll be showing you my all face. That means there's a shaft running through it, actually rubbing on the O-ring. So you've got the air that you're breathing as an astronaut, right? And it's being held back from the vacuum of space by all two face. little bitty O-rings. It's constantly disintegrating rubber. All right. Disintegrating rubber. It's constantly disintegrating rubber. It's constantly disintegrating rubber.